Okay, mm -hmm. being six o'clock, I'll call the board of the October 13th meeting of the Swansea Planning Board here at uh, Whitcomb Hall. I'll begin with a roll call. Scott Self here. Michael York here. Jane Johnson. Michael Day here. Brandon Sell here. Richard Lane here. Selectman's Rep Ken Colby here. Steve Malone alternate here. I will see Steve for Jane. And the agenda this evening, uh, we'll uh, review the minutes and approve maybe the minutes of September 22nd, 2022. Uh, the applications public hearings, uh, we have a planning board number 22-019. That's a multi-tenant application. Mohammed Tanvir, I think, pronouncing it correctly, has submitted a multi-tenant application to open a convenience store and an existing multi-tenant building owned by Richard Pratt, located at 919 West Swansea Road. Subject property is shown at tax map 71, lot 11, and is located in the business district. Upon finding that the application meets the submission requirements, the board will vote to accept the application as complete, and a public hearing may follow immediately or will be scheduled for a time and date certain. Under other business, we have planning board alternate member application, Brian Vertigal, 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 and we have B, zoning ordinance amendments for 2023 discussion, rules of procedure amendments, site plan review regulations, and any other business as may be required. So first up, uh, do we need a regional impact? Yeah, we need a regional impact. It's something that was on the agenda, and that impact would be this. Anything on the agenda require us to notify surrounding town. I'll make a more motion that it does not. Motion by Michael North that nothing on tonight's agenda is, uh, is regionally impacted, I guess, and we require us to notify surrounding towns. Is there a second? Second. Second by Richard Lane. Is there okay. any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, now we have the minutes of September 22nd, 2022. Anybody have any uh, thoughts on the minutes and changes or suggestions? If not, a uh, motion to accept as presented would be in order. Motion by the Ken Coley to accept the minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Richard Lane. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? And we have done that. Now that brings us up to the uh, multi tenant application. We have that in our packets here. Let's have a look at that. Get the applicant sitting here and so it has to be here. We can still look at it. Is that indicated that he would be here? I'm not sure you're going to be able to get um, there. I thought you wanted to rearrange the agenda. Let's see. Um, Let's see if it's complete. If we think it's complete, we can wait for the public hearing to go and we'll wait for the for that. So, the application is for Mohammed. I think here, I think it is 919 West Monday Road. That's right down here, the where uh, uh, Secord's ice cream place is and all that. Down there. And it's going to be a convenience store. It's a type of business, and it's going to be on the left side of Swansea Oil down there. You'll have one full time employee. And the hours will be 7 a.m., 9 p.m., seven days a week. And estimated customers today, 50. Parking spaces plan, 10. And deliveries, he's expecting four trucks. I'm not sure if that's total a week or a week. Be a week. And as far as outside lighting, three lights in front of the store. And I'm assuming that those lights are probably existing. Anyway, think so. We have a floor plan there going up and set up in the So, yes, we are. And we set up for meeting floor. I think that is what else we got here. Would appear that the application to me anyway is complete and uh, anybody have any comments on the application? Got everything there, I think it's pretty straightforward. It's a multi tenant application, anyway. Put 
Looks like it's complete. I have a motion. Saying that the application is complete. I'll move that the application is complete. And ready, and ready to go to public hearing? Correct. Okay. Application, I mean, motion for application is complete by Michael York. Is there a second by Brandon Self? Uh, is there any further discussion? And all those in favor of saying aye. Aye. Okay. All those opposed? And we will wait for the public hearing just in case the applicant shows up. So let's go to other business, which is the first up would be our application for an alternate member, Brian Vertigal. Vertigal, Vertigal uh, is here. And we've seen his application here for yeah, alternate. And it's pretty straightforward. And do you have anything to add to your application? Uh, you, know, I, you know, I served 10 years in the military, so I uh, I like to be involved uh, you know, doing things with communities, so uh, here I am. So I just want to be uh, here to ask thoughtful and purposeful questions as uh, products come to the town, and that's why I'm here. Okay, well, that would explain the phonetic alphabet. I know when you spelled your name to Beverly last time, you used the phonetic alphabet, and you just picked them up to be a pilot or something, but <laughs> in the military. What did you do in the military? Uh, I was infantry. It's well, yeah. yeah, all right. Yeah. It's kind of fun, I guess. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so, do we have any questions for the applicant? If not, if no questions, um, you know, we we could we could use the help. We only have one alternate here. That's Steve here, and we need two. We can have three, but we need two at least. So. Uh, I'll make a move to we we accept the application. I'll second a motion to accept the application and a motion. Actually, uh, it's not necessarily that. It's just a, a motion to um, to appoint Mr. Vertigil as an alternate member yeah. of the planning board. Yeah, so okay. Motion by Michael York to appoint Mr. Vertigil as the uh, applicant as a uh, alternate member of the planning board. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Brandon. So, is there any further discussion? And all those in favor indicate the same aye. Uh, all those opposed? Okay. So, you need to be sworn in at the, the, by the town clerk, town hall, anytime. Just walk right in there. And uh, they'll fill out the uh, actually. He could have that, really. Yeah, he could have that. This is what you bring to the uh, town clerk. She can give you one, but you need to bring this one because we're not going to do anything with it. No, don't waste it. I think that you want to kind of create the police so it's pretty when you bring it to the right to the Yep, I probably should do that. And that should be it. And they'll throw you in. You're welcome. You're welcome. And then so then you'll attend all the meetings of the planning board, you know, what any meetings that you can, mm -hmm. and you'll be up at the table here. Whether you're seated for anybody or not, you'll be up at the table okay. with the planning board. And and if you're seated for someone, you will you will stay for public hearings. If you're not seated for someone, then you'll join the general public and the board, whoever's seated, will discuss the public hearing and okay. deliberate in that way. So that's basically how it works. And you ask all the questions that anyone would want to ask. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, look at all the stuff, uh, anything. So, yeah. Chairman, you might add that if you're seated, you will be able to vote on. Oh, I'm sorry, but you're right. Yeah. If you're not seated, you don't, but you can participate in the discussion. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Okay. And then we'll see you probably the next meeting. <laughs> Welcome aboard. All right. Thank you. And you know what we meet? We mark the, we meet the second and uh, fourth Tuesday. I mean, Thursday. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep. All right. See you then. So, let's see. And we could talk about the zoning amendments and that type of stuff. We'll, we'll save that uh, application public hearing for the last. I have a little confusion, Chairman. Why did you not go to a public well, hearing on the application that was. The applicant is, isn't here. And uh, if he if he does show up here, um, you feel you need to have we would like to have him here. I you know, okay. and it's fair to him too to hear what's just... discussed about it. So, okay, if he's not here by the time we're, we're done with the rest of the other business, then we will just go to the public hearing, and okay. discuss it, okay. and uh, down with. Thank you. 
zoning ordinance amendments. Or we have a list of them here, which we talked about. I think it's our last meeting. And pretty much this is just a list of what we have now, right? Correct. Yeah. And the current language. Yeah, and what we have in there. And uh, this we can use as guidelines to change. And we have that letter in the back from uh, Paul Thomas. And he was here at one of our meetings. A while ago. A little looks very familiar. Yes, yeah, it does look very familiar. <laughs> and of course, he was here too, talking about those very things. A, a 75 foot setback on um, Route 10 and 12, and also the uh, what is it? The um, 125 foot setback for um, septic systems from wetland, which we have. And anybody have any comments on some of these? We might as well start discussing some of these. But we have uh, first one up actually is a 25 or a 125 foot setback from wetlands or uh, at least field or a dry well. And we've had that 125 foot one on there for quite some time. And mainly it was due to uh, actually due to Joan Furter. <laughs> really, she kept it on. She was on the uh, Conservation Commission for a long time. And uh, the Conservation Commission wanted to keep that extra distance there as far as safety goes, I guess, between the septic system and, and the wetlands. And so it stayed in there for that all that time. So was that there before like all these um, businesses that Mr. Thomas has said that without would those be setbacks, they would not be able to like the Ford Broad oh, and all those yeah. places. Were they there before this 125 um, foot setback requirement for the septic systems from wetlands? Um, mainly, he's he's talking about the in those re, those instances the setback from Route 10 to the to the building. We've got a 75 foot setback there. That's one of the things he's concerned about those businesses he was naming there. I don't know if he really even knows where the septic system on those buildings or the wetlands are on those. He's concerned about the 75 foot setback as opposed to the 30 foot setback from the road to the front of the building. Gotcha. But, but yeah, getting back to the, um, the septic system setbacks there, the state, I'm guessing, is 50 foot in there. The businesses that these sites, most of those are really the hook to the um, to the town, to the town setback. So yeah, I don't uh, think Dallas, I see the I waste management should be keep our fever, the Ford garage. Yeah, all of those should be, but a lot of those which already did before the zoning was passed. Yeah, a lot of them were, and that's what's why they grandfathered in for the setback. You know, Cheshire Fairgrounds, that's been in there for a long, long time. Yeah, it certainly has. <laughs> Car racing back in the day. But oh, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it used to sneak into those. <laughs> yeah, you didn't do that. Yeah, you ended up to pay this pasture. But we, we probably ought to we either consult the Conservation Commission or have a representative come in. I think Jane is our representative on the commission there. Yeah, but she's reluctant to use both hats when she's here. So. Yeah, but that's the purpose she is here. The usual yeah, hat. I that's agree. why he's on the board, and that's why he's on the board. You both have stuck in there, just a representative. I, I agree with that. That's, that's, I'm just coming from her point of view. Yeah, she's just right. I've heard her say that before. <laughs> so, yeah, if uh, if we consult the Conservation Commission, get their input on that to see what they think about it um, yeah. and the reasons why they think that. Yeah. They may say, yeah, we want the 125 foot setback, but they might not have any good reasons. So <laughs> I said it might. <laughs> I have one question. How deep are the properties that we're talking about where you're not going to have the furniture, you're not going to have the uh, setbacks from the. Uh, well, we're, we're, we're still on the 125 foot setback from a septic system to wetlands. We right. haven't gotten, gotten to the front <laughs> part of it. Are the properties deep enough to increase the setback to the 125? For the septic system. And we're talking about a septic system there. Um, I remember, I think his properties going south on on 12 um, are behind them. There's a whole series of wetland back there. There is, yeah, on that road. I think, there, yeah, yeah. I think that, that was brought up when you mentioned that initially. Because you own the, the properties on. Uh, 
by Massey Hill Road there as you, as you get past Massey Hill Road. Right I think point. it's a little bit yeah. further down on the right hand side southbound. That wouldn't even have that wouldn't have even 75 feet set back. In my no, mind. That's, that's pretty well right up to the road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in places. Yeah. I do not know, do know back in the 80s, a gas station was proposed right there at the corner of Marcy Hill and, and it was turned down by the town. Mm -hmm. I remember that because of the wetlands. In fact, the people are trying to do it had already started to fill in part of the wetlands to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I lived up that way, so I remember that quite well. Well, the case on does too. That 125 foot setback for septic systems, as opposed to the uh, 75 foot for from the state, probably affects residential use more than it affects business use. I would think so. Yeah. You can probably fit on any of the business properties, probably fit anywhere in there in the, the septic system. It's the 75 foot front uh, front setback from Route 10 to Route 12, which is what his main concern here is. Mm -hmm. And I know when the board put that on, it was because of future development of those two corridors, if they were to expand Route 10 and Route 12 and widen it. Uh, <clears throat> then those buildings would be far enough back from the edges of the road so that they could expand it. But, you know, realistically, is that going to happen? Well, right, Ever. Now, right now, uh, this hearing is coming up on that set when they're going to be about the boot tank corridor and what right. safety improvements is. And of course, one of the big issues is it's wide, flat, and open. And that's why people just, they don't obey the floor you speak with they never mind anything else. Yeah. Now we're still talking about a safety issue. I mean, what is the state actually going to do? Hopefully, they're going to listen to us a little bit. But <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure they will to a certain regard. They might not do do what we want. But See, I don't. I don't think Route 10 will ever get wide. I think it narrow, but it's going to be wide. And Route 12 the same way. Probably not. Don't know. There are there are sections of it that really can't be widened very much right. because of the building. Through the village. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Route 10 and Route 12 both the same way, yeah. that way. So yeah, is it right to uh, to burden the property owners that haven't built there yet with the 75 foot setback or bring it back to the 30 foot setback or the line of sight setback mm -hmm. where the other ones are? Yeah, we're talking with, fairness, yeah. With the new technologies in, in septic systems, would looking at this and it's when it was created, <clears throat> would we actually really need to have 125 feet uh, safety uh, net mm -hmm. for the wetlands? So say with the new technologies, we may not have to have that deep. Yeah. Uh, might not, yeah, it depends. They've got those mini uh, septic systems that are like treatment many treatment plants actually that really do a lot of treatment in the what would have been the septic tank itself they still have leached beams <clears throat> mm -hmm. like uh, a normal se septic system does and uh and then the question is when is the town actually going to expand the septic system uh you know the public septic system eventually we're going to have to but what oh. time period is who knows uh, sewer laterals for north and west over here yeah yeah, and even if they do, it's, it's not going to take a lot of the, the properties that would be affected, a lot of the, the residential properties that are nowhere near the sewer system, which yeah. probably would never be put on. You know, the properties of the land over here, or say where the brown farm is that hadn't been developed yet, at some point that's going to be developed over in there years to come, but at some point it is a good piece of property over yeah, there. Yeah, I think we're bought by Nick's too. One of the reasons why he doesn't, according to him, he can't get that sold is the, the restaurant itself. So, as he went over the hill, mm -hmm. but the proper assignment isn't to have people look at it so whether they'll show public so I don't want to put it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be. So we, I don't know if we'll get that file with the public system or not, but it's probably not going down Route 10. I wouldn't think. Let's see. It, it crosses West Street, but that's a pressure line. That's a force main crosses West Street. The, the closest gravity main that crosses Route 10 is um, Perry Lane, right there. That's the gravity main. The other the crosses, the pressure line crosses from um, the housing development 
what is the name of them? It starts with a V now. I forget the name of them now, but they have a, a pressure line and you can't hook into that. So you have to have a, a gravity line to hook into something like that. And that's quite a ways down there. So that's probably not going to happen in quite a while. Well, the lucky thing about that, there is room there for somebody for a private sector system and then LA is picking up on. There is. And, and again, businesses as a rule, they don't require a, a big septic system. No. You know, it's small domestic sewer. We don't uh, really. Uh, I don't know, you'd probably uh, a septic system for a three bedroom house that do any of those businesses along there. Probably, yeah. And of course the soil in Swansea is very good for drainage anyway. <clears throat> but I guess getting back to it, uh, the 75 foot setback that the state has, go back or go to that, probably had it way back in the day, but not without conservation weighing in, commission weighing in, seeing just what their thoughts are. Yeah, I think we should wait for them too. Without uh, that. But the, at least they can't say we didn't listen to them. Yeah. We'll see. But, you know, see what their thoughts are. They have some, uh, you know, legitimate, really good reasons as to why it's not a good idea. So it's really a problem that it loots, you know, out of the, uh, the 75 by area. I don't, know, it probably doesn't. Because that doesn't carry too far, but again, they're concerned with polluting aquifers and that type of thing too, which is probably negligent. I mean, not, not negligent, probably not going to uh, happen too soon. But the setbacks, we can discuss those there for the Route 10 and Route 12 Conservation Commission. I don't think it want to weigh in on those at all. And again, we're talking about building setbacks from the right of way of the road to the building. And again, we have it 75 feet in those two areas there. And that was the reasoning that we had it was, was for the Route 12 or Route 10 future widening of the roads. And if it doesn't look like it's going to happen anymore or anytime too soon, it probably won't, then it might be a good idea to go back to the 30 foot setback or the line of sight. They have a line of sight too. You know, if right. this building is a little bit closer to it, you can go to that. I do that more within reason, I would imagine. But well, what, what happens there usually is DOT state will not allow them the uh, driveway access if they don't can mm -hmm. put it back. If they're going That's their thing, it's a safety thing the engineers are. Yeah. Well, I think we ought to go ahead with discussing that or actually put it on our, our public hearing agenda anyway to drop that back to the 30 foot. I wonder what the average setback is along those two routes. I don't know if we got to go average. <laughs> no, I'm just here on the Yeah. Uh, but the, the typical setback on, on existing buildings is what you're talking about, right. right? On Route 10 and Route 12 there. Right. Well, it's a lot closer than 75 feet. I don't know if I, I don't know how many are closer than that, but it's... Uh, no, no it's, yeah, I know. I'm trying to think of the ones that's closer than that to it, and there are some there. But it's it's a, uh, a taking of the property, really. Right. They can't use it for anything. That's a lot of land out there in front that they can't really use for anything. Right. And in fact, we probably ought to go over that too with, with the front of the building, in front of that area. Set. 30 foot setback, if it goes to that, can be used for as well, because we'd be changing that. If the zoning changed that, we'd probably have a look at that before we change the zoning to make sure that what we allow between the building and the road would still fit on the 30 feet as it would on 75 feet. We allow certain things in the zoning there. Fact, see what we allow in there now. It's there. And there aren't too many properties on Route 10 actually that can hook up to the sewer either. You know, you know, Gamarlos is on it. Uh, the new housing complex they're doing over there is on it. Part of the old the uh, East housing com complex is probably on it. Yes, it is. Where is that? Which one is it? Uh, Princeton properties. I guess the old Haley Park. Oh, it used to be Haley Park. Park. Oh, oh, Haley Park. Um, yeah, it's now Princeton. That's right. Yeah, of course they are on it. Definitely they're on it. They've got how far back they've got fire on, on the new project down there. How far back is this couple of 
small businesses right there. Is the Tur factory that's there. Turmoil. Turmoil. They're, they're on it because that's where that lateral goes across. That gravity lateral is right in the corner of their yard and it goes that across your 10 there. Does it go all the way up to West Street? It does not. It goes straight across, cuts through um, the ball field area there and goes straight across and comes out on Winchester Street through the private property. On, on both sides. Yeah, and that's where the uh, Princeton Properties hooks in right over the, in that area there and it goes straight through. So it does not run in front of their building. It runs through that property. That's how they hook up. There are some properties on West Street that are on the road. There are. Which side of West Street? Though? Probably the ones on the village side versus the one going up in my house. Correct. Yep. Yep. It's on it. And let's see, there's some properties. Um, what is it? Uh, it's the street that has Tom Little's chiropractic. Like Holly, Hollywood, ever. Alley, yeah, Alleywood or Alley, yeah, Alleywood. Oh, yeah. Alleywood. Yeah. Alleywood. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't gonna say that. I, I did. I wasn't well, gonna say the, the, the local name. So yeah, there is two on that as well. There's a little housing project right above that that is connected to that store as well. But they they come down. They don't go along Route 10, and it doesn't go down West Street uh, to Route 10. It starts from from the beginning of Alleywood Alleywood Avenue there. <laughs> comes down and goes through the back properties where Little's uh, chiropractic place is, and it goes in front of Turmoil and ends up in that manhole right by where Turmoil is again, right on the corner of Ten. It does not go down Route Ten; it goes it's back from Route Ten. So the, the lot there, Perry's lot, mm -hmm. where the multifamilies are, they're not on a septic there. Uh, you mean the one he's selling over there? The yeah, lot he's selling. Uh, well, he sold the house, the multifamily already, but now he's got it. We did in some that one on, on the corner there. Yeah, we did the two two lots there. It could go on it, though, because I, unless there's not enough elevation, they could come from that lot up towards Alleywood Avenue, hook onto that lateral, and go down the other would way. Would we require that if they put somebody in there? Because I know there's some things in the works on that place. We don't have to. Re well, it depends. It would be the developer you know, would be requiring it. We don't require that they hook up. The we require that they hook up if it goes by their property, but not that it's a... Uh, they can put in a septic system if, if the property can sustain it. If they were allowed to look in, I think it would be a lot less expensive than putting in a septic system. It always is. It always is, but you just can't do it sometimes. You know, it's either cost prohibitive or or the elevations aren't correct for gravity in there. You can't do it that way sometimes. But it depends what you know what they develop that as. You know, regular businesses, a small septic system on that property would be fine for that. Uh, there's there's water for that property. They could hook on to the West Wednesday Water Company. Yeah, they up in the California Brook Creek down the road. Put a pipe in the California Brook. Sorry, uh, let's see. The, the pipe runs down that street, West Street, from the wells up there. So there's, there's already water going by that property. 10 inch, you know, it's any the pipe there. Anyways, and it goes right straight across Route 10 right there, West Street there, and all the way down to the mill. And then and it's still, and it runs. Parallel to Route 10 from the corner of West Street and Route 10, parallel across where the ball field is, down to where the uh, Princeton apartments or Princeton building, and it feeds those guys down there. That's out on Route 10, though. That's on it runs, it runs out on Route 10, all the way down the ball field, and it ends up right at that park, right there, or right at the condos, or whatever they are. So there's limited water down there, but there is there on that side. Mr. Chairman, may I make a comment? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're allowed to be. Yeah. Um, I just want to make it a note that the Zoning Board of Adjustment has given variances for the setback frontage. Uh, and especially when I know this Mr. Thomas talking about it's a hardship, especially if there's a hardship involved. Mm -hmm. We can't use this property in other, any other way. That's one of the criteria that they do vote on. And they have um, provided relief to property owners on Route 10, especially, that I've been aware of, oh, not so much on 12, but on 10 in the past. Yeah. So another reason to bring it to the 30-foot setback, really, so they wouldn't have to go to that extra step. Yeah. That 75-foot setback. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think we ought to really consider that one and see what we get feedback at the public hearing or whatnot. Just look at that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And see. Thank you.
probably can't find it. But There are other few things in here we can discuss as well. But yeah, that setback. So we'll put that definitely on that setback and we'll work on that uh, on what the rest of the zoning looks like to adjust it for that. Because there are things that, like I was talking about, that's involved. I mean, that is allowed in that 75% setback that probably won't be allowed in the 30% setback. So we'll have to look at that and get going on. So let's see. So we also have, let's see, let's set back. We're going to wait for the Conservation Commission to weigh in on the 120 foot five foot setback uh, from a wetland for a subject system. Mm -hmm. uh, but does any of the board members have an objection to bringing that down to the state's 75 foot setback for a septic system to a wetland? I don't know what you're doing. Well, okay, so we'll see what this, the uh, Conservation Commission says about that. Just the record, I would like to learn more to see about that. But you, like you, to you asked about objections, so I don't have an objection, but I would like to learn more so I can do some research on that setback for septics. Yeah, learn more and meaning uh, in this group or conservation commission or, no, just, or just on your own, you mean? Yeah, 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 take a look. Just, Oh, definitely. I don't have any objections, but I also well, and this this is all we're talking about zoning yeah. here. This is nothing really formal. Mm -hmm. When we have the public hearing, that's when the the board really gets down to business there and decides what's going to be presented to the voters, and and we vote on it. Then that's that's when it comes down to yay or nay. So yeah, between now and then, anybody, everybody, right? And just do your research mm -hmm. and look it over. Yeah, and, you can do that and it gives us good discussion. Yeah, but now we're just. From preliminarily yeah, seeing when we'll go to the and think about discussing the next slide. Do we have the uh, floodplain district? And that was because of the, uh, I think the map was in the camera. Let's see. What minute of the reference in there that we had, Sarah? That was wrong. Yeah. Well, that should be updated rather. Precisely. Yeah. And it's just the description of the district, it's not actually. In that section of the ordinance, it's the very beginning of the whole document where it describes each district. Wait a minute, but that that's in the the so that's the in language, our zoning or in there. You're talking about the language in the actual ordinance in the zoning ordinance. The it's correct. Okay. But the language in the in section two of the zoning ordinance that describes each district is it doesn't match the language for the other section. Okay, okay, that's where I was wrong. All right, and that's as they say a no brainer. So definitely put that one on there. <laughs> yeah. We have section uh, 11, non-conforming use, non-conforming building structure, and non-conforming lot. And I'm pretty sure that we discussed that one. That was the one of the uh, the cubic <clears throat> footage of the building itself, uh, because if someone replaced a non-conforming building and they made it higher, it would alter the cubic foot <laughs> or yeah, cubic footage of the building itself. And it wouldn't be allowed in the zoning because you can't make it any bigger. That's, I think, basically that's what we're talking about. But it's also a little bit inconsistent with number three of that same section where existing legally non conforming buildings or structures um, can be enlarged or changed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yeah, and it says it can so, do it there and you can't do it up here. Yes, that's right. Fire other and yeah, the cubic footage. So what are we going to do there? Are we going to leave the cubic footage out of there? To fix this? Let's see. Again, so it's restoration, reconstruction, alteration, and or replacement of non-conforming buildings structures are allowed, provided that the cubic footage and the footprint of the original building structure stays the same or smaller. So and 
that's yeah, that's the problem. Not or it's conjunctive. They, it's not or it's conjunctive. Mm -hmm. Any non-conforming building structures that have been destroyed or whole and I mean in whole or in part by fire, by other natural disaster, or by violent voluntary demolition may be replaced within one year of the damage or demolition in the same or smaller footprint and with the same or smaller cubic footage. So we're talking about buildings that they want to, it'd be in the same footprint, but they want to go a bit higher with it. And that would make the cubic footage larger. And it says you can't do it here. And I guess that's a problem over at the Wilson Pond area there. They've had problems with it because those houses are very low. They want to make the ceilings higher. So that increases cubic footage and might be over there saying, no, you can't do it. Well, it's not that they want to make them higher. It's that code will not allow them to rebuild at their current oh. height. Oh, I see. So, oh, code. so I think that's 22, I guess. Yep. Exactly. Yes. <clears throat> so uh, we have a you know, system with the federal code that we go by. You know, so if they if they have a room that has a six and a half foot high ceiling, yeah, they would not be allowed to rebuild that same space mm -hmm. because they have a minimum of seven feet, an average of seven feet over a five foot width or something like that. I don't know. There's a formula, but a lot of the houses, um, they they seek variances not because they're trying to expand their, their square footage per se, but they can't fit within the provisions of that ordinance. So we could add in something there, right? Because it's, it's contradictory. We could say something like um, an increase in cubic footage is allowed um, if it is, let's see how we can work it. Can we just start to code? To meet current code or something like that. Yeah, that's right. If, yeah, if it is, uh, yeah. A lot of those are old two by four construction in that area. Today's code is going to go to two, two by six. But if we don't have any cubic foot thing, they could build a much larger building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? I was just going to say limiting it to square footage might might might, might do the trick. What was that, Sarah? Limiting it to square footage, you know, just changing out the word cubic to square. Yeah. <clears throat> we don't use cubic footage that much anymore. Usually in building and square footage. Mm -hmm. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I was thinking out a while about cubic footage. It, it was to keep the, the non conforming use um, the same. As it was being non-conforming was grandfathered in for whatever reason, and it was to keep it. So I think that you wouldn't put three floors on the place well, yeah, when you're rebuilding. And my question was, why are we using the term cubic instead of square foot? Because of that, cubic is different than a square. Exactly, and that's why we're using it in here. But if we were keeping the same square footage, it's true they could potentially build up rather than following your same footprint, having right. a smaller footprint. You can, you can keep the word, you can keep the uh, language for the footprint and change the cubic footage to square footage. Because you can't expand north, south, east, or west because you can't expand the square footage of the footprint. Can I make a suggestion here? I think you guys ought to bring members of the ZBA in, into this. They have to. They have dealt with a number of cases where cubic footage or cubic volume, I should say, mm -hmm. was was the main reason for them having to go to it. Maybe they can give you some insight as to how to approach the the problem and clar and make it better. <laughs> Correct yeah, it. Yeah, and we will like we'll welcome them about that. Yeah, they're yeah, input they've on. They've dealt with this over and over and over again, yeah. and I'm thinking they have some wisdom that might, they might be able right. to impart to you guys. Good point. Mm -hmm. so let's see. If we added something in there about an increase in cubic footage is allowed, and <coughs> your suggestion was. If it is, if it has to do with um, meeting code, meeting code requirements, because I believe, if I, I might be correct, I don't know that Swansea goes by the federal building codes. They don't have their own, basically. No, you're right. They do. I mean, yeah, they don't have the right. Yeah, they do go with the with the, the national federal, building. Yeah.
So yeah, so an increase in cubic foot may be allowed to satisfy code requirements. Um, again, getting back to that cubic foot part of it, it was put in there so that a single story house couldn't suddenly put on two or three floors if they're gonna rebuild from a fire because right. it, there was nothing right. in there to stop them from doing that. Right. So, so it would still, still be a non-conforming right. use, but it would have gone increased in size. So does the zoning code have height requirements? They do, but I don't think mm -hmm. they'd be going like 41 feet high, probably not. But even so, if it's a non-conforming building, the whole idea of this paragraph in here was that if something happened to it, uh, if it was say, condemned or a fire burned it down or something, the person would be allowed to put that thing back in there because they've had it before and they should be allowed to rebuild the thing or rebuild on it or whatever. The, the, the issue is now that when they go back up again, a lot of your building homes, okay, they they don't they <coughs> they have a certain height, minimum height you have to do and a maximum height you have to do. So this could be a, a impediment to them being able to do that. Because well, we could add in there for code ceiling height. <coughs> that sounds like that's where it came from. Yes. Okay. I believe it's eight foot minimum now. So we could add in there an increase in cubic uh, footage may be allowed to satisfy code ceiling height requirements or safety and satisfy uh, building code safety, uh, building code ceiling height requirements. But uh, or in addition to Steve's point about square footage, mm -hmm. if if a house is sixteen hundred square feet, they the height would change and some things would change in the cubic. That's why like maybe that isn't the best description. But if they are, they can't put another floor on without changing the square footage. Mm -hmm. That's right. I have, I have a good suggestion. I think let's have Mike Jasmine come in and tell us what he thinks. The issue is. Yep, we can, and we will have Mike Jasmine and we'll have ZBA or whatever, yeah. but this board has responsibility to do it of as well. Course, you know, we got to come up yeah. with something to give them to work with. We can't just say, well, those guys will figure it out for us. <laughs> no, 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 that's what I'm saying. But Mike could come in to one of our meetings. He can just. And we will. He comes to our meeting yeah. all the time. And, yeah. But we got we to gotta get started on it, give them something to go by, sure. give them the direction we're leaning towards or yeah. why, why it's wrong, why yeah. it's correct, whatever. Uh, just yeah. something to discuss. So I wonder if the square footage doesn't change. That's that's based on the footprint yeah. and size of the house, not based on the height. Right. It's based on floors and not on height. So I wonder if that would alleviate the need of a lot of questions. The order. question arises: what is included in square footage? For example, I don't think closets are. Yeah, and it's livable space, I think, is what it okay. means. Okay. So okay. Some people could be livable. Yeah. That's when they use cubic blocks. Rather than square footage. Square footage is basically, and then yep. how far. But then they, they're not going to have a second floor. Yep. That's almost square footage. Yep. If, if, we're, if we're letting somebody rebuild and they're going two by six, they're going to lose interior square footage. So they could take that and go vertical to make the ceiling height. Right, and as long as we have them doing the building by the cold minimums, because what now they may be restricted now because of the colds. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't build the way they want to build up because the colds don't allow them to do that. If they want to say a foot, you know, five foot ceiling, six foot ceiling. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've, I've got another monkey wrench in this whole discussion. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, we have all the houses that are built with probably four by six uh, wood. Now it's something in the neighborhood of two by four. Right. Okay. Am I, by going to a smaller beam, is that what it is? Sure. Am I uh, increasing my square footage either yeah. on the interior or the exterior? You would be really doing the square footage because that's not the way square footage is done. It's done by the outside perimeter. Okay. Okay. And then if you have a second floor, that room, you're talking cubic now. I'm talking about material. I'm talking about material square footage. Right. Inside, you're going to lose cubic footage if you narrow the inside by using a larger two by uh, four versus a two by six or whatever. You'll change that cubic footage. And I think Richard was trying to get to that point where you actually lose space in there. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm thinking it's this ceiling thing is what's going to keep. If you have a two-story building, you put the first floor on right in your, your, right in your footprint that you already are authorized to do. But then when you go up right now, we, can't, we don't allow it to go up only what is there now. And what there is there now doesn't meet the building codes. And not necessarily. That's what we got to reflect. I, I think we need to reflect that in the uh, zoning to reflect the fact that if they're going to rebuild, they want a two story building again. In my point of view, no, no ceiling needs to be more than five and a half feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's because you want to be able to reach everything, right? Yeah. We'll know that. Mary, Mary, six foot one woman, and you'll be like, yeah, hey, I was. <laughs> So it, it talks about the um, the footprint. It can't go over the uh, footprint of the original building or structure. That has to stay the same. Okay, right. so it has to stay within those setbacks. That business there, it's in here so that someone won't. They, you know, they lose their house. They can build even though it's not conforming. That's what it's there for. That's fair. That should be there. Right. So <clears throat> the cubic part of it was to keep them from building a two story house and keeping the same footprint. They'd come into Mike and say, "Well, you know, that's the same footprint." It might be 60 feet high, but at the same point. <laughs> so that, that's what the cubic foot thing was in there for. Right. So if we do specify, and we'll run it by Mike in the CBA, a sentence that we were talking about before, an increase in cubic footage may be allowed to satisfy code ceiling height requirements. Yeah. And then we'll leave it at that, and then we'll discuss that with Mike in the CBA to see what that. they think about it. I think that's the right point. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, let's see. And then we have the non anything existing legally non conforming buildings or structures that have non conforming setbacks may be enlarged or changed, provided that the expansion does not further encroach into a setback subject to the following. Yeah, this is where this is a, a weird one. I forget why or how this came about. But, anyways, in no case shall the expansion be closer for a property line or right of way line than one half of any setback distance requirement for the zoning district that the property is located in. So, uh, again, yeah, you know, say it's 30 feet, they can't be more than 15 feet because that's half of that setback distance. Okay, in the case, expansion be closer. So, but it does say that they, they can expand it. Right. And, We're before we say they can. Yeah, and it doesn't, yeah, that does not compute right there. Which is it? Right away. <laughs> yeah. Man. So, And then again, number three, existing legally non-conforming buildings and structures and non-conforming setbacks may be larger change providing that the expansion does not further encroach into a setback. Maybe it should be left like that. I think that might be how it was before. Did Beverly, did we get some of this, this in? Did we get some of this input from the CBA when we changed this? Do you remember when we changed this? I do. Uh, Which one are you referring to? We're, we're talking to, we're on uh, on number three and three A of, of the uh, building structure and non-conforming lot part of it there. And you know, we're on number three, which says existing legally non-conforming buildings or structures that have non-conforming setbacks may be enlarged or changed, provided that the expansion does not further encroach into a setback subject to the following. And then we go down, you know, in no right. case shall it be one half. I don't recall them. That they didn't have it at all. That. No. So uh as far as uh, people into the ZBA for bearing to not set back and things, um, it, are there a lot of people in there that you know of that are looking to get closer? There are there are non-conforming building anyways with a non-conforming setback. Are they in there very much to get a closer? You know, well, for example, coaching? I know of one situation where there's a house on Route 10 further south than the models that was very close to Route 10, and they wanted to build a porch, which would which moves the porch, moves the building further into encroaching on the. Mm -hmm. They were already. Maybe thirty feet, maybe less. Yeah. Because those old houses are right on top of the road, almost. Mm -hmm. and they wanted to build a porch, and they had to go and get a variance, and they did grant them the variance. Didn't get that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that would have right fallen if into the porch, this part. Porch was a bit larger than the front of the house, mm -hmm. so it was going to expand mm -hmm. their encroachment. You've got to realize too that the zoning board is a safety valve for development to discuss deal with situations like that where, okay, everything makes sense, but this one law doesn't fit within this ordinance, so we're going to give you a safety valve to 
relief. It gives the yeah. property owner relief. Yes. Yeah. I, I might add a special case that the ZBA heard over the summer um, where both number one and number three applied to it. Um, they wanted to tear down the house so that they could rebuild it and expand it. And it was a non-conforming structure on a non-conforming lot. And they wanted to tear down two garages, both of which were non-conforming and build one new garage that would also be non-conforming, but less so. And we didn't really know where to put them because they kind of fell under both, you know, because one says if they go by number one and they tear everything down, then they can't make it any bigger. And if they go by number three, they can't tear everything down. They have to leave, you know, one wall of building up so that it's considered a renovation mm -hmm. <laughs> or addition. So for me, that's where my question on this is coming from, like which, which would be correct. And then the CBA throws them back at me saying, why are we hearing this? It doesn't belong here. So I don't know how this can be clarified. This one ordinance has been changed a lot. You know, it was adopted in 99 and amended in 2000 and amended in 2001. A section was deleted in 2004. It was amended again in 2009 and again in 2020. So it clearly has problems. And I don't know what the solution is, well, the number one paragraph deals basically with the yeah. cubic, the size of the building. Yeah. And of course, the number three deals with their non conforming uh, setbacks by the looks of it, mainly. But then it says, subject to this paragraph down here, maybe it should, just shouldn't say that. Maybe it just should still say that uh, the existing legally non conforming buildings and structures that have non conforming setbacks maybe are. <laughs> Maybe, maybe enlarge or change, provided that the extension does not further encroach into setback. I'll leave it at that. Maybe it should be existing or, um, you know, restored reconstruction. You know, so it, it, number one, all, you know, structures that fall under number one can also fall under number, number three because number three is exclusively for existing. Mm -hmm. So if you have a house that burns down and when you build it again, you want to bump it out a little bit. Um, you can't do that the way the ordinance is currently. In the, num in the number one paragraph. Yeah. yeah. I have seen scenarios I where see what you're saying. scenarios that you're talking about where the one wall scenario. Yeah. Where the zoning code speaks in terms of percentage of destruction and value of the mm -hmm. formerly existing structure. And you can build, rebuild within that percentage of that, that, that value. But the problem with that is the building was built 40 years ago, burns down today. The value, where, what value were you talking about? Current value, former value? And is that something you're citing that's part of our ordinance you're talking about? No, this is back in New York. Oh, this is in New York. I see what you're talking about. Yep. I, I, you know, had to deal with that issue. Yep. Yep. I don't know how they would have decided. If, if I were over there, I would say it would have been the current value of the building when it burned down, you know, as assessed value or paid. I was counsel to the zoning board. We were all over the place. With it. We should have come up here. We didn't give any. Tell me on the list. Who was the other fire department? The long go. So you know, we're we're saying that on number three we we should include our paragraph number one. Uh, and I see what you're saying there because right if, if that house burns down or something like that, uh, they and they have the space to do it, or they have the space within the provision of number three mm -hmm. to do it. So let's see. Yeah, but then yeah, you know, we're still contradicting ourselves there <laughs> because we're saying it, it may be enlarged or changed. So, um, maybe it shouldn't be there. Put hang your hat on the beginning of uh, number three: existing legally non-conforming. Hang, hang your hat on the word "existing," depending upon the level or point of destruction. Is it still existing? Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. That's that's one way for, for the lawyers, I suppose. It all depends on my and they can run with that in thirty different directions. <laughs> Well, wouldn't nope. that case that I just gave you, wouldn't that apply here to the porch? Um, You're not really increasing the volume, the cubic volume, because nope. it's not living space, it's a porch. But it did apply, they did have to still go to the ZBA to get that there because of the closeness to the road. I'm just wondering if that was one example where that number three would apply. It might have, but it, it was number three was in the ordinance when they went for the variance. I'm assuming, you know, it, it might be something left best to the ZB. Well, they might have been even closer than one half. Oh, I mean, they, 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 been, they, were, they were very close to yeah. the 10th. And Good by thing. putting that, that might have even reduced it beyond the 50 feet or whatever. And that's feet. why they needed the, yeah. yeah, that could very well be. But again, that number three is talking about uh, changing or enlarging a non-conforming building. I guess that's what we have to decide on whether that should be something allowed in the zoning, changing and enlarging a non-conforming building. Let's see, and, and this is specifically talking about the buildings that have non-conforming setbacks, which brings it apart. What if we just put a period after setback and if somebody, if we have to refer to that, we can maybe grant an exception or a variance to it rather than getting involved in the balance of that statement. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying maybe it just belongs in the ZBA to deal with these things rather than in the zoning ordinance, because in the zoning ordinance, as we see, you can't, can't cover it all. CBA is there to give relief to someone who wants to do, uh, say, like what Beverly was talking about, want to build that porch closer to the setbacks there. And that's what they're there for, and that's what they do. Do we want to put it as, an, 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 as a right to um, enlarge or change a non conforming? Mr. Uh, Chairman, again, there was another. I just remember there was also one, an addition of a ramp when somebody needed a. a um, Oh, wheel a wheelchair yeah. ramp, which mm -hmm. again was not livable space, but it was encroaching, and the ZBA had to address that. So there are instances where this would apply. It doesn't impact on usable space or cubic volume. Mm -hmm. well, this is, I mean, bit of living yeah. space, I should say. Not an exterior stoop for staircase. Um, is that a permissible encroachment into the front yard or the setback area? And a handicap ramp would be the same thing as a stoop or staircase coming up to a front porch. It ex it expands the it expands the encroachment. <clears throat> yeah, unless we specifically say that um, a stairway and a ramp as an encroachment uh, doesn't apply, then it does apply the building unless we say it doesn't. You know that. Uh, it's part of the New Hampshire's home rule or non home rule law. There, there, was, there was another one that this is very interesting. There was another one with a, a house, a family had a, 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 an older home, and they had um, a porch which they, they needed to enclose, which would be en enlarging the cubic volume, right? And the re mm -hmm. reason they needed to enclose it is because the gentleman involved had. Uh, to be on dialysis, and he had a special chair for the dialysis. It was a, and there was no room in the living area or any other place other than this porch that they could expand to to allow him to have dialysis on a regular basis at home. And so that was certainly a hardship, yeah, right. a medical hardship, and they granted that. But there again, it was you take a porch that was not included originally in the cubic volume. And now they're closing it to make it living space. Yeah, right. So Our again, I think videos. that's one of these instances that arose that they had to address. And that's where the safety valve issue of the zoning board comes in. The zoning well, board is that safety valve. All I'm suggesting is that there are a number of cases where this does arise. Yeah, yeah. So, but more often than you think. 
and it works, but yeah, the, all those cases are, are quite unique and different in themselves. Yeah. Again, into what the ZBA is for. I'm sure we can find one case amongst all the cases that doesn't fit. Right. Mm -hmm. But can we write a zoning for exceptions like that? That's why we have a ZBA. Yeah, no, right. It, we wouldn't be able to cover it all. Would there be something we miss? There will uh, always be that one thing we miss. Yeah. So I guess the question is, how do we want to approach existing legally non-conforming buildings or structures that have non-conforming setbacks? Uh, do we want to even mention them at all or or not, or take that out of there? You know, we're talking about an expansion here, and again, it well, may have covered some of the ones that Beverly was talking about, and maybe didn't cover them all. Right. You know, if we if we take it out, then would the ZBA be able to do a hardship ruling on it? Oh well, yeah, because the if it's not in the zoning, you know, they can get a variance for right. if it's allowed in the zoning, then they don't need to go to ZBA. If it's not allowed in the zoning, then they go. And if it's not in the zoning, it's not allowed. Right. So then they go over to the ZBA. So proving the hardship is a challenging part for the variance. If Sometimes you, it is, yeah. If you just want to bump out yeah. walls so you can make a larger kitchen, right. where's really the hardship? Yeah. You don't have enough cupboards. I mean, oh, and they take the hardship very seriously. Yeah. So that's something to consider as well. If you're going to take it out completely, would people be able to use their property the way that they want to without being able to prove hardship? What I'm looking at, the restoration of a non-conforming building, that could be something that was in existence before any of the zoning came in. Mm -hmm. Three is somebody is giving them a variance to become a legally non-conforming building. It's two different items. Uh, explain that again, number three. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Okay. Restoration or reconstruction uh, of a non-conforming building. It doesn't say anything about legally. So what I'm saying is prior to the zoning being implemented, there are buildings that are non-conforming as we're looking at them. That's different than an existing legally non-conforming building because somewhere along the line, somebody had to go before zoning oh. and get a waiver um, or variance in order to become a legally non-conforming building. Year one. Yeah, you just won. Good point. Year one, my house is built. Year two, along comes zoning. My house is grandfathered, and it is a legally non-conforming existing building as of year two. Mm -hmm. What? Oh. Yeah. yeah, so you can't, you know, you don't want to mess with that language too much because what happens to all the year one houses? So you're saying existing legally non-conforming means the same thing as grandfathered? Yes. Actually? I would say so too. Yep. Yeah. I thought you were making a contrary argument to that. No, I'm just, my well, my point was that if I have a house, say on Wilson Pine, that uh, was built well before the zoning went in, and it's it doesn't have the setbacks, et cetera, it's non-conforming. You know, if it burned out or something like that, then I have to go through a whole process. But if I have a proper piece of property and I go and I want to build something on it, I have to go under existing zoning. Now I have to go before the ZBA to get a uh, variance in order to put up a non-conforming building because I, I can't get the setbacks, et cetera. Yeah. That, that is correct because that is using my example of year one, year two. You're now talking in year three. I've got trees, and along comes he wants to build a house where there used to be trees, but I don't have an existing house to fit into this at all. Yeah, and it's you know what Richard is talking about too. It's uh, building a non conforming structure on a lot of record that is non conforming as well, I think is what mm -hmm. you mean. So Certainly, yeah, that definitely is a, a variance type of thing, and you have to prove hardship on that that you can't use a property otherwise. And you know, forget the other criteria, but it has to go through that whole thing. But again, 
You're going down a rabbit hole. We we need to we need to keep it simple. We need to <laughs> decide what we're going to do about this. What what we really needed in in here for this number three, and what it really means to us, or what it should mean. And it's it's trying to deal with um, non-conforming buildings that have non-conforming setbacks. It's only important plan exam. So I wonder. There are buildings that are conforming buildings with non-conforming setbacks. I mean, the building might be conforming, or and the setback wouldn't be. Or is the setback making the building non-conforming? You know, what are we talking about there? Because it's, it's a legally non-conforming building. Why is it non-conforming? Don't know. Might be non-conforming because of the setback. Okay, growing up in also Long Island, which was highly zoned. My parents had a piece of property on 450 by 100. The guy next door had a very much larger piece of property, didn't have the necessary square footage, built a new house with zoning board permission close to my parents' house. It was supposed to have 10 feet uh, side yards. The house was built with an eight foot side yard, throwing my father's house into a non-conforming status. Why wouldn't your father's house? Because my father didn't have a peep between his building and the new building next door. But he did before the new building, correct? Right, but the new, the new building threw my father's house into a non-conforming status. Well, shouldn't your father have had to have a setback between his house and the property line? Before the new house was built, yes, he did. But he still had the setback to that property line. The setbacks are the property lines as well. Yes, that's what we're talking about here. But he had he had a two foot setback off his property line. Oh, so he was not conforming to begin with. No, because he was a year one house before the zoning came into Like I effect. said, not conforming to begin with. But he yes, was, he was not conforming, but he had a ground up again. So, getting back to this, do we do we want to um, do we want to mess with the setbacks? Do we want to allow setbacks to be further encroached or not? I think that's what we're looking at in this paragraph. Because we're talking about non-conforming setbacks. Obviously, the, the building is closer to the property line than it's supposed to be. So should that be something that is allowed by right as long as it's uh, line uh, one half of any setback distance requirement in zoning district? Or do we want to just get that out of there? Would you say that you're talking about the entire number three? Yeah, and three A. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're deciding whether or not, because in the first one there, the restorations and reconstruction, all that business there, the building is not conforming, but it's going to stay in the same footprint. It's not going to get any closer uh, to the setback that it is now, and it's not conforming probably because of that. So then, how about if we leave sort of, it like that? Just sort of after, Go replace, ahead. after replacement of but legally non-conforming buildings or structures allowed. Uh, but what after replacement is it? Yeah. Oh, in, in number one. Number one, yeah. yeah the alteration and or replacement of legally non-conforming structures, buildings or structures. Do we need the word legally in there? Um, what do you mean I don't know. Three? Yeah, but if we're going to get rid of number three, because the building is probably existing. You don't need existing in there because it wouldn't be an unconforming building because it wouldn't be there. Obviously, it's existing because it's there. And it's it's legal because of what Steve was saying, and, and it's legal because it was grandfathered in uh, prior to. Isn't the real the problem enlarged? Doesn't it directly oppose number one using the word enlarge? It does, yeah. If that's that was that Sarah's point. Change make maybe changed seems logical given number one, but enlarging does not seem logical given number one. Do we need that number three in there for anything? What purpose is it serving? No, that's what I'm talking about. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, mean, I would think that we should table the discussion until we have a representative from the zoning board and a plan examiner here to discuss from their point of view. We will discuss it with them, but let's let's see if we can get something resolved to give them again, as I say, to give them something Sorry. to go on. If the planning board says that, well, we don't need number three and A in there, then we got something to discuss with those guys. Those guys come in and say, oh yeah, we need it in there because of whatever. 
but at least we give them something to go with. You know, we're we're charged with with uh, the zoning ordinance, the planning ordinance. So can I ask a question with regard to this? So the footprint, the footprint is a they don't have to build on the same location. Why not? That's well, as long as they maintain the same, same, say the footprint is 20 by 20, a square mm -hmm. building. And they have a large enough property, they could move it to a 20 by 20 over here instead, but now be encroaching on a, on a side setback to a neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say you have to build it, it doesn't, on the foundation. I think, it, I think it's implied though. Yes, that's what you were saying. You know, I think it, that footprint was there. That footprint wasn't over there. That was right here before the place burned down. Okay. I think it's implied that's my question. that it's there. Yeah. So it's having the foundation. So number three stays or not? Get rid of it. And I would get rid of it and get rid of it. If, if Mike and, and the GBA want it, they can come in and scream about it. Well, it's it's for discussion. Okay, the plan board is going to do this. We're charged with doing zoning art. The plan board is going to do this. We're going to cut that so out of there. Moving that is moving with all three. Uh, all of three and three A. Yeah. Okay. So. By the way, one of the setbacks, one of the examples also was a house on. Swansea Lake that wanted to build a deck and their house is already non-conforming. It's too close to the lake and the deck would actually be almost over over the water <laughs> and they had to go um, yeah. for- Did variance. they get it? They're, they're um, like they got a, a, a sort of variance. Yeah. They had they to modify, they had modify the, the a deck. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm fine with all those special circumstances, you know, with the ZBA deciding them out and doing it because, again, you know, people want to use their property the way they, they, they want to use them. And if it's on the zoning ordinance, you know, they're stuck maybe, but you know, the ZBA can offer them that, that relief there. Uh, we just don't have to make things confusing in the zoning ordinance to give them their job, <laughs> make their job more confusing. But so for now, we're going to, we're probably going to add in that paragraph or that sentence at the end of number one that talks about the uh, the code ceiling height and the cubic footage. And then number three, we're going to X out. And number A, I mean, A, 3A, we're going to X out of there. Uh, and that brings us over to home occupations. Oh yeah, it's not allowed. That was it was admitted, yeah, in the zoning ordinance. It's not allowed by right in all districts as stated. And we have to amend it one way or the other. We should anyway to make it clear. And it's not included in the in the uh, industrial zone park or in the village of the business district two over here. Let's see. Okay. So and again, that's that's a pretty straightforward one. Uh, do we want to allow home occupations? Uh, our intent of it was that it's allowed by right in all zones, but it mentions it specifically in rural ag and uh, and resident and all that type type of stuff. But it does not specifically mention it in the uh, uh, village business or industrial park zone. So mm -hmm. I think it ought to be allowed in all of them. If someone has a house in, in the industrial park zone or Maybe not down here, but even so, if they turn that place down there into condos, someone might want a home occupation down there. This is what we went through with Flatley. With the home occupation? You know, based, you know, somewhat in that line of, because he, he changed or was building or asked for variance to build in the industrial park. And it was specifically uh, stated that they, you weren't allowed to have. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah but mm -hmm. wasn't that a special exception? That's what we had wound up having to do. Yeah, because that's that's different. A special exception is allowed in that zone, but only under special exception. It's not a variance that variance is for something that's just flat out not allowed. Forget it. You can't do it no matter what. But the special exception says you can do it, but it's just that the planning board has to look at it a little closer. And CBA has to look at it and that type of stuff, but it's allowed to see what those are for. But in this one here, I think we ought to just name it as an allowable use uh, in an industrial park zone and build village business district. In all districts, basically. All districts, yeah. It says it's in all districts. We had put that in there, but uh, I had never realized that it wasn't named specifically in the other districts. So we need to do that. And that'll clarify that it's, it's allowed everywhere, which is what the intent was anyway. 
-hmm. It was allowed by right without it, um, without coming to the planet. Because the, it's described at home occupation is described as uh, something that you'd never know was there. You'd never know the person had a business right. there at all. So why through the planning board and go through all those hoops? And the home-based business is different. You'd know it was there. You got a few trucks parked outside. That's why they come here for the home-based business. So anyway, that's home uh, home occupation. Are you are you changing anything about the permit being required? Yeah, um, I didn't realize a permit was required because we had put in there it was allowed by right. And that doesn't mean that a permit is required. That means you can just do it. You know, people, uh, I don't know if we're going to specifically exclude it. I don't see in our in our zoning that it says you have to have a permit unless it's in there someplace, is it? So, I, I haven't seen I don't it. think that it's in there, but we have a permit for it. Yeah, it, yeah. And, it, and it probably dates back to when we did come to the planning board. They, I mean, the planning board gave you know permit to have their home occupation there, but no longer that would be necessary. So scrap the permit? Yes. So we would leave say, that in? Yeah, it's no, still required? Uh, no, we scrap it. Oh, we scrap it. Okay. Permit not required because it's allowed by right. Uh, no one to know what's there. They need a permit for the home occupation, I mean, home-based business, of course, yes, they do. Yeah. but not for the home occupation. Okay. Oh, let's see now. Yeah, just did that. Omit an area that is exempt from the building permit requirements from 3C3. What is that? It says for residential properties, one single story storage shed up to 200 square feet in area that is exempt from the building permit requirements may be located up to five feet from the side or rear property lines. So what we're saying then, the question is, is that allowed or not that 200 square foot no, the question building. here no. is um, Mike requires a building permit for all size sheds. He just doesn't charge anything for ones that are 200 square feet or less, mm -hmm. but he still wants people to come in for the permit so he can make sure that they're meeting all of the setback requirements. Okay. And so this is saying that they don't need a permit. Yeah, it is. Yep. And then I was always under the impression from long time ago that if it was under 200 square feet, you didn't need a permit to put it up there as long as you can put it by the, you know, uh, the setbacks and all that type of stuff, you didn't need it. I didn't know that he, um, and I don't know how long we've been doing that, maybe forever, maybe I just never knew it. I, I only know current practice, but so it, it should be consistent. Um, it should be, and, and it should be consistent to whether it needs a permit or not. And also, <laughs> This is getting off subject, but in our site plan review regulations, we have exempt uh, buildings of 100 square feet or less. Mm -hmm. So we ought to decide 200, 100, whatever it's going to be, how to make those two. But getting back to this, what do we want to do? Let's see. Uh, Mike is saying that he always makes them have a permit that doesn't charge him for it if it's under 200 square feet. Correct. Right. Because he wants to make sure the setbacks are correct. Mm -hmm. exactly. I think that makes sense. So, and it's his suggestion is to amend in area that is exempt from the building permit requirements. Yeah, so we just get that out of there then. So it, it will read, yes, uh, the area. And then we just put a period right there and cross out that is exempt from the building permit yeah. requirements. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it would read for residential properties. One story storage shed up to 200 square feet in area may be located up to five feet from the side or rear property lines, but must still comply with front side requirements. Okay, yeah, we get rid now, of that. Sentence. This is just for residential zone. Does it apply to real agricultural zone? Um, this applies to everywhere. Yes. Thanks. This is, uh, yeah, everywhere. That could this be is, unclear. This is accessory use it's, and accessory building. It's in section three, General. which is. Yeah. General category. It's not specifically for residential or anything like that. So we all did you have an objection to no, 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 I just okay. wanted to be clear in my mind because right. you know, I live in a rural agriculture area. Yeah, <laughs> yes. no, we're here to get all the input to see if we're going to have a property that always going to feel close to my head. Anyway. So, okay, well, we, there's going to be an issue. Let's, let's have a look here. Oh, yeah, add utility generation as a use by right or such exception in more districts. And yeah, we can do that. Um, anybody have any off the top of their head? Uh, business district, uh, rural ag, or what? They, we're talking about mainly solar, I would guess, utility generation. And you could be more specific. 
and have it be solar. Have it be solar, yeah, rather than. Uh, but right now we have utility generation is permitted in Village Two. So you want it all all districts? Is that what you're suggesting? Let's see what you should have it because it's. It will be in residential districts, but people with with solar panels on their houses and yeah. stuff as they do and, that. And rural if they want a two by five, want to put solar panels up. Well, the description of utility generation is I can't remember if we defined it or if I looked it up in the state, but you know, having um, solar panels as an accessory use is different than utility generation. Well, we probably ought to be specific because this is yeah, utility yeah. generation. What about made. windmills too? That's not the same. Wind turbines. And you know, you could have a generator in your backyard. That's utility generation and a diesel generator back there. And you could say it's it's a, a right. And it's not prohibited, right. but it's not listed as a permitted use. And if it's not listed, then it's prohibited. In our zoning, right? If it's yeah. not there, you just yeah. have to. So. Right, but it's not. We're not you calling can, it out. You could just make them all and make it all special exceptions in all districts, so that it would just have to go to the ZBA if they. Exactly. That way, it would be. Covered. Would that mean every time somebody? We already have something. Um, no, it just be listed as a special exception. Right. It still have to go. But right now, you don't have to go to put solar panels on your house. So you wouldn't have to go if it was. Because it's an accessory use. Yeah. So we need to be mute. careful about how we mm -hmm. add it. So we're not being more prohibited. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Got to think about that. We could put a size limit on it. So it's it's more about standalone utility generation, you know, like like a wind turbine, mm -hmm. like a wind turbine or the the solar array that's being put in on, on Route Ten. What's that? Like on a field. Like on a field, but you know, for instance, when they put all of the solar in at the wastewater treatment facility, mm -hmm. they didn't have to come in for a variance because it was an accessory use to the structure that was already there. But the folks that are putting in the solar farm that behind Seacords, um, they needed a variance because it's not it's not an accessory use because there's nothing else on that property. So if somebody wanted to put in wind turbines or another solar array or insert whatever nuclear power plant, I mean, who knows? As a standalone thing, they can only do that at the mill. <laughs> Which is okay, but it's in conflict with the master plan. So that's why I brought it. Let's give that one more thought. Let's think about that, how we want to address that. Uh, be our homework or something. Because, yeah, that we could, you know, put certain sizes could be exempt from it. Like what would fit on a roof, whatever a megawatt that might be fit on a roof could be exempt from it. So you, a homeowner wouldn't have to come into the Special acceptance, CBA, special acceptance, put one on the roof or the garage. Or the it could just be standalone facilities or all special exceptions. Right, you could put it up. Standalone. Right? standalone would cover it because standalone is going to be a big one, probably. Well, maybe not. Well, well right now you're allowing anything that's not standalone already yeah. everywhere. So we got <laughs> to think about it. So you could have a small <clears throat> shack that, and then their accessory could be this giant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that that shack would have to be the primary <laughs> use of the property. <laughs> it would have to be to be a little fat wheel and I have my mule going around the ground. <laughs> yeah, there you go, right there. So we'll put a special exception for mule power. Is that in yeah, there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, so we'll think about that. Um, Actually, let's see, I think that gets us through it. We have all of the letter there by Paul Thomas there. Yeah, the final one is rezoning tax map 16, not one. I oh, that's Terry. Oh, I knew that was on somewhere, but I didn't know where that. Oh, this Terry's up the blue floor. There it is right there. Yep. Yep. And definitely that's one that we want to do. Yeah. I think yeah. that makes good sense to do that again. So, yes. Yeah.
Is that the one that's opposite uh, the Barrens? Yes. It's an old farm up there that we use on. Okay. All right. Then uh, that brings us down to rules of procedure amendments, site plan review regulations. But uh, we're keeping those on as a standard issue. So if we have time at a meeting, we just discuss those rules of procedures and things. Oh, you want to talk about the schedule on there? Pretty self explanatory. Well, oh, no, I understand. Oh. Yes, it is. I can. I, okay. Um, I was talking earlier with the amount of stuff that's coming at us, whether or not we should try and do a second meeting in November. Oh, what do you mean, uh, stuff that's coming at us? You mean zoning regulations you're talking about? Not zoning projects, regulations, just projects. Because oh, because of these things. There, yeah, there are a number of what's out there that we're hearing in the wind. Yeah, and so um, what's it look like, Sarah? A bunch of coming this way? Well, I mean, I don't have anything officially yeah. yet because the deadline isn't here. Mm -hmm. But um, we do potentially have site plan review for the age restricted housing going in by the airport. Mm -hmm. It's possible Flatley is going to come back around. Yeah, that's still that's standing possible. out there. We're currently waiting on the plans for FW Web, which I don't think will be in November, but they could be. Um, and then I don't know if this is going to be before you folks or if it's ZBA, but the campground on Swansea Lake, I think they have an open variance. It's going to be expiring soon. And whatever they're changing there is going to be coming back before you guys, either in November or December. Again, I don't have the application yet. I've just had communication on it. Am I forgetting one? Compliance, maybe. Um, Whenever they said they were scheduled. What yeah. about the one down there on Terry's block there by the Lucan and West Street? There's still a ways out, I think. Um, the compliance hearing for the ball field is set for next meeting. Okay, the 14th. Okay. Or no, for the um the 27th. Oh. Of this. So we haven't voted on yet this year anyways, whether we're gonna have one meeting or two meetings in November, have we? No. I don't think so. So let's leave that as you know, scheduled for Thanksgiving. Yeah, I don't know. No, we'll it's on the calendar. Well, well, the question really is um, in addition to actually meeting, but the the application deadline for that meeting. And if people are bringing things for that, I mean I can Hold back, but we have it. It's on the calendar, so people Let's think see. they can. We've had we've had two meetings earlier in December before the first and the second Thursday on yeah, other years. It makes more sense to do something like that if you think we've got stuff coming. Well, with but, the first one, that deadline would be coming yes, up yeah, very exactly. soon, yeah. and so I don't think anybody would be making probably making not that deadline. What about the 21st? That's a full week before Thanksgiving. That's a what before? A full week before full week. Thanksgiving, the 21st. Oh, it's a Thursday, isn't it? Yes. No, the 17th. 17th. Pardon? November 21st. Is a Monday. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that one. Wait a minute. Okay, so we're November. Oh. 3 10 17. Thursdays. Oh, that's I'm looking at your countdown to the zoning. Oh, okay. uh, yes, well, my we, apologies. We probably aren't going to have a meeting on, on Thursday then, regardless. We never do. It's never had 24 and yeah. will. So that's good to hear. So maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> right? yeah. maybe the 10th and 17th if you need it. Um, do we even need one? You know, if these things are yeah. pending coming in there. Uh, they aren't really. And I am it's discouraging them. I, I have yeah. been telling people we will not likely be having a second meeting. And and I've been mm -hmm. telling people that you know the larger projects will have an, an a public hearing that's open for two meetings that will, you know, if your application is complete and it's accepted, it will be open at the first meeting in November, but probably continue to the first meeting in December. Mm -hmm. But while we do that, we also have to keep in mind. The new timeline, and I haven't applied that to this logic, so I can't report where we fall. And again, 
um, you know, with the new timeline, if the planning board and the applicant agrees to extend it, they can extend it. If they don't agree to extend it, the board can be forced into a decision and they make a decision. That's true. And, and you just go with it. So let's leave it at that, that we don't have the two meetings in, okay. in uh, November. Uh, I think, it, yeah, I think it'd be fine working out that way. It has past years and they're a little bit delayed. So it's I was going right by it down to these guys here. You're darn right. Yes. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. The uh, the application public hearing under that uh, multi tenant application, we approved the application for Mohammed Tanvir. And now I'm going to open up the public hearing for that multi tenant application. We all have it here. <laughs> So the applicant, the applicant isn't going to show up probably and doesn't have to show up no. because again, what they're doing there, they're opening up the convenience store, want to open a convenience store to the left of Swansea Oil, has a floor plan in here as to how the layout's going to be, which again, looks like a convenience store in there. I found some additional documents today going through all of the filings for this property. If anybody wants a better floor plan or a better idea of where in the building it is, yeah, let's see where in the buildings are going to be. Yeah, let's see where it's one, three, 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 and uh, you know, it's a retail building there. It's been used for retail for a long time. Yeah, it's a straightforward application. Um, I trust the team always doing anything in there. Let's so see. Did uh, did staff have any uh, any comment on that, Sarah? Um, about parking or the building permit. Um, especially that anything any changes inside the building are going to need much better plans than what has been provided. Yeah. And the building permit will need to be issued, and buyer also needs to sign off on it. And there was an interest in creating some dedicated accessible parking spaces in front of it. Yeah. So, what was that about? Was that something from Mike? Then? Yeah. One of that in front of there. Do we have that dedicated in the other areas in that? There is. I, I there. think there'd be one space yeah. in the entire. And lot. What was it? The cat spaces, which is that's what we're talking, we're talking about. about there. It should be required depending on how many businesses you have there. Yeah, we don't have any up there at all yet. So, yeah, I would I would agree with that. Should be two up there. They might not necessarily always be used for that store, but they might be used for one to my store or something like that. I don't think there are any any have spots up there. No, I don't. There I wasn't the last time I was there. Within the last week or so, if we're going to start requiring handicapped spots for that location, um, are we throwing off their parking camp and everything else? Because if you've got access lanes and everything else for a handicapped spot, I believe there are some federal and state codes on, on handicap accessible parking spaces in every business. Yeah, but you know, we've also got local codes that say. You've got to have so many parking spots per business or square footage. And a handicap would count as the same, though. I don't think you need a separate count. You, gotta, you can't say you okay. have to have this many for this business plus the handicap. I think, I think what Steve is saying is handicap spaces are typically wider. They take up more area. They're, they're wider yeah. and they require yeah. a, a, an yeah. access. Right. Yes. Whereas a normal parking spot is not. So right. one can have space may take right. up three parking spaces. It may if you have a van accessible. And I don't know right. what the code says when you have to have so many van accessible ones, then you have handicapped spots that are not van accessible. So we'd have to look at the code and see how much of each place would need according to there. See what I'm saying? There are there are ones that are not van accessible that they're oh, yeah. same. Exact measurements as a regular packet space. Yes. So how yeah. what does the code say how many we need of each? I mean, 
And does that change the number? Because I don't think in our code that we said that parking space has to be this wide and that our handicap has to be this wide. That'd be nine feet long and there's a square foot right there. But does that it specify on the handicap on the No, it doesn't. No. And this place here uh, requires 7.2 and they're proposing 10. That would go to your point of is there enough for what the square footage of the building is? Yeah, I would say there'd be enough parking there. Yes. There's a lot. A lot of parking. There, when you move wide there, there's a lot. Of there are a lot of businesses there, too. Yeah, there are. There's yeah, parking. There. Yeah, but whatever the business guy's close in 10 minutes and he's gone. And are we required? Yeah. I know this is, only, this is the only one in front of us, but it required a handicap in front of all 10 of those. Yeah. And that's, that that's where you run into the issue. You can start uh, thinking, don't believe that the full rest, but you can always look that up. I believe it's how large your building is. Well, it's a good start if we require, require two for this one at least. Mm -hmm. And as they come up, because they're going to be renting that building. I know they're going to be breaking it up in there. I guess we might maybe require on one on this end and one so, on that end because it's a long, duplicated building. Yep, mm -hmm. look at it again there. But I think that's a um, good suggestion by the staff about the two dedicated acceptable parking spots. And uh, we have complete with access aisles as well. And can be shared with the joining storefronts, which it can be because there's other businesses there. Do we need to be concerned with how they're going to supply that? You mean the store? How they do what? Supply. You mean you know, getting product in and out? So yeah, through the, the front door or the back, door? back? Yeah, there's a road out back. This access road out back where the delivery trucks come. When they were in here before, they said they're going to be uh, bring deliveries in the back. For the sake of the record, Mr. Chairman, are you, is the board recommending there be two ADA parking spaces for this particular business? Um, just that'll be in a motion. So just hold off on that. Whatever is in okay. the motion uh, will okay. be that. But that's what you're what we are proposing. Uh, yeah, two, two. So, uh, two okay. dedicated accessible parking spots okay. should be in any motion for approval, okay. uh, complete with access aisle as well. If you okay. put that in there as well. Uh, they're also suggesting about consideration in addition of storage and janitorial space on the site plan. Um, I don't know that the planning board is into that type of uh, restriction or purview as to what they can do with the janitorial space or not. So. That's up to whoever makes the motion if you want to include that in there. And obviously they'll require more, more plans if they're going to do remodeling there. So if it's yeah, but the Sarah's point goes in the motion says say that uh, uh inspected by Mike and the fire department to make sure that we get the code. Yep, and usually is yeah, you know, the fire department and building inspector is generally in any of the motion that we do. So yeah, if, it, if there is a motion to approve, then uh, a building permit would be required, I would think, because we're going to um, change something in the store store there. Don't know really how much because you know their plans are there are no coolers in, in that yeah. section now. We're going to be having coolers, which then have to include plumbing. We're going to sell drinks and beer and stuff like that. I don't think so. So again, you got any any building change or any change inside the building would be up to the code enforcement anyway, Mike Jasper. Right. So that could be incorporated into the Inspection just like code enforcement, I think would be enough right there because if it doesn't fly with Mike, it's not gonna fly. So if it's a motion for approval, then the motion would have to include that they uh, have two dedicated accessible parking spots complete with access aisle. That would be reasonable, right? Mm -hmm. And that they get a building permit with Mike Jasmine or, or I mean, we usually have approval by the code enforcement officer mm -hmm. and approval by the fire department to sure. we put in there. So those two should be in there. Uh, anybody else think of anything else like this? Um, other businesses that have been in this building have used the parking lot as retail display area. And so oh, yeah, that is, it's recommended that that be prohibited. Yeah, that be.
and that if there is any outdoor or retail display, it be done under the covered walkway and not in the parking lot. So we're trying to sorry, yeah, that right there, right? done that level. So again, there are any outdoor display will be done under the covered walkway and not in the parking lot. Okay. So that's I think that covers it all. We have that covered, Beverly. I do. I'll okay. have to read it. Yes, please. Be to approve the multi tenant application of Highland Conveyor to open a convenience store in an existing multi tenant building owned by Richard Pratt, located at 919 West Swansea Road. The property shown at tax map 71 lot 11 and located in the business district with condition of the applicant providing two dedicated ADA parking spaces, receive a building permit, and all outdoor retail display be done under the covered walkway, subject to approval by code enforcement and the fire and fire department inspection. That's it. Yeah, okay. that's okay. it. Yeah, with the parking spaces and ADA parking spaces and right of what was the was lane? The, the aisle. The aisle. I think that's in the right access aisle. I'm sorry, say that again. ADA parking spaces and access aisle. Oh, and access aisle. Yeah, oh, that wasn't in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah access aisle. Okay. Do we Go want ahead. to or do we need to put in a condition that uh, all deliveries be done from the rear entrance? I don't think so. Um, Ken, if you want, if you're making the motion, you can add that right in there, whatever you want. I don't know that it's necessary. I think all of them are going to uh, get deliveries from the back, uh, according to what they were doing when they're yeah, in the road. Those mega customers coming to the front, they want people unloading in the front. Yeah, would be ridiculous. I would think. Mm -hmm. I'd get mad if I was a business owner, keep my customers out. And I don't know that the, the planning board should have the authority to say given that anyways. I know the dollar store has their deliveries right down in front of that front parking lot. Gamalos has well, they're in back Gamalos is back. Yeah, let us side right there. Yeah, yeah that's what it is. We leave that up to the building owner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So who wants to make the motion? So moved. Okay, motion by Michael York. And uh, Beverly, Beverly just read the motion. We all heard it. We all, uh, and it was seconded by uh, Michael today. So we got two Michaels on there. Mm -hmm. And is there any further discussion? Then all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you, Scott. Did you want to have this conversation? Let's talk about that for a minute. Sorry, you guys. One more thing. This is where this is this is just uh, you know a, a consensus of the board. Now this piece of property here is Stafford Drive coming up here. Stafford Drive coming up there, um, going up to the the fairgrounds, and about halfway up there's a little pump station right there for the water water pump station right there. And these guys are planning to put a building up here. And it's web. Yeah. yes, it's web. Yep. And that building would meet the setbacks for here and here, but that little pump house is right in front of their building. So if you're measuring from where that pump house is, you wouldn't meet the setbacks of that building there. Oh, Actually, see. the building setback is fine. It's the pavement. The pavement setback. setback. Okay. Pavement the setback. Does, it, it even says it right there. Yeah. Pavement setback there. Mm -hmm. So, okay. and hand there. Hey, I don't need to grab on right. Oh, no, actually, oh, that's your best side right there. The best. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. So, had that little pump station not being there, they would be fine anyways. And it's a public utility, really, is what it is. So, should we make them go to the ZBA just to have the ZBA say, "Well, what are we looking at this for? What does it make sense to us for?" It's a no-brainer that. They do. They would have made the requirements anyway without that. There has nothing to do with their building at all, and it will have nothing to do. And I'm sure they probably get a variance or to go by that anyway. So we just made a consensus. Should we have them go to the ZBA? Is what we're asking. So I want a closer look at that down there. I know it's a little far, far away there. We were there. So that's what we're looking at there. Yeah, yeah, they're proposing to put the parking lot, the paved area, about one foot off of the fence to the pump house. Right to it there. Yeah, well, they need all that parking they can get in front of there. Right. 
can't think of anything that that would really cause the danger problem. No, as long as you know there's a fence there, so the fence. Um, the fence ensures working distance and area around that pump station there. So it's not like the cars are going to be parking right up to that building and they aren't going to be able to get in there to, to work on it or fix it or something like that. It's just one of those, you know, setback things that we have. It's like having a telephone pole. Actually, the setback. Yeah. utility yeah. has about the same thing. Yeah. Right? But so, I think it's a, really it's a paving area. Yeah. yeah, and they'd be parking right up to, like Sarah said, close mm -hmm. to that fence of that little pump house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get the fence to damage your cars up there. Well, just maybe any plowing. They better they get if they if they plow and they knock down the fence, they have no care. It's yeah. what favors to anybody else. So consensus of the board that is yeah. it's kind of we don't need to send it to those guys. No, I can't I can't get that. Have it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you. I think that's that. <laughs> Which thing on the town? <laughs> oh, the Wednesday session? Yeah. So the 18th and the 25th. 18th and the 20th, right? I don't remember. Yes. Okay. And we can call Keith and the 25th. I like, I like going keen and messing with them people. Yeah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a both. Mess, messing with Keen is a swanly right passage. Am I right, Richard? <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Hold around with me. Yeah, yeah that's really <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, so we're still working on the site plan review regulations and the rules of procedure. Um, we don't really have much to discuss tonight, I don't think. Uh, Sarah and I have been looking at the order, putting it in order, and that type of stuff. So we're still doing that. Yeah, I don't have the way to do it. Yeah, that's fine. I'm still <laughs> going around penciling things in, too. So uh, I think that brings us to other business. Anybody have any other business to present to the board? Otherwise, vote for adjournment would be in order. So moved. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> for adjournment. Hey, slow on that one this time. I, no, yeah. I was waiting for you, but you didn't do it. Oh, well, so, you know, I can't. <laughs> I can't make a motion on anything. No. Jay will get mad at me when I. Do. Okay, we have a motion for adjournment by Ken Foley. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Richard Lane. Is there any further discussion? No. Then all those in favor indicate saying aye. 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 And we are adjourned. Thank you for your input, Beverly. Okay. As always.